In section 9.2, we talked about using balanced chemical equations to see the relationship between the moles of reactants and moles of products. And that's great and everything, but we don't measure quantities in moles. We measure them in grams, generally. So we need to learn how to do this in terms of masses. So here are the steps. Um, you can fill in the blanks in your notes. Steps for calculating masses of reactants and products. First of all, you need to make sure that your equation is balanced. Okay, some of the homework problems are going to make you balance the equation. Then we're going to take the masses that they give us and convert those to moles. And we learned how to do that in Chapter 8. That's the molar mass of the element or compound. Then we're going to use the balanced equation to set up the appropriate mole ratios. That's what we talked about on Friday. We're going to use those mole ratios to calculate the number of moles of the desired reactant or product. And then we convert from moles back to masses. And I don't expect that to make a whole lot of sense to you yet. But hopefully after we go through some examples, it'll make a little more sense. So stoichiometry is, that's a big word. Stoichiometry is a process of using a balanced chemical equation to determine the relative masses of reactants and products. And this is a, a very essential calculation in chemistry. And it's also used a great deal in industry. If, you know, we want to make, you know, five tons of polyethylene, and here's our reaction and our equation, and how many tons of reactants do we need to get the amount of product that we want? And so those are the sorts of things we're calculating. So here is what I consider the big picture of stoichiometry. Grams to moles the moles to grams. So if we, if we say that we're, we're given um, a mass of A, we're given grams of A, some ele element or, you know, that's a reactant or a product, and we want grams of B. Well, it's going to be grams of A to moles of A to moles of B to grams of B. And this reminds me of an episode of Dora the Explorer, right? Where do you go when you don't know where to go? Who do you, no, I got that wrong. Who do you ask when you don't know where to go? Yeah. The map, right, thank you. So we ask the map, and the map says, well, first, you know, we start at the grams, and then we go to the moles, and then we go to the moles, and then we go to the grams, and then we're at the snowy mountains, right? But, and it's always these three things, you know, and they chant that to help these little preschoolers remember. I have a four-year-old, and he's a boy, but he still likes Dora. So think of this as your map. This is going to guide you through these stoichiometry problems. It's grams to moles to moles to grams. Grams to moles to moles to grams. And you know that you're getting it when you wake up in the middle of the night chanting grams to moles to moles to grams, okay? You just need to get that in your head. That's the path. The path tells you, the map tells you where to go. And dimensional analysis is, is really, really useful for these calculations. And if you haven't figured that out yet, Now's the time to do it, okay? And if you need some help with that, please ask me. So let's look at an example here. For the following unbalanced equation, how many grams of chromium-3 oxide can be produced from 15.0 grams of solid chromium and excess oxygen gas? This example is more difficult than I would give you on an exam but I think it's, it's useful because it helps us to review a little bit, like in terms of balancing equations. The first thing we have to do is make sure that our equation is balanced. This one we're told, it's unbalanced. So let's look at this. We need to balance it. Um, if we start with chromium, we have one chromium on the left and two on the right. So if we put a two here, then that'll fix the chromiums. But then over on the right side, we have three oxygens. On the left side, we have two oxygens. Then we have one of those odd even issues. So that means we need to double everything. So I'm going to erase that two and make it a four. 
and then I'm going to double this one. So now I've got four chromiums on the left and four chromiums on the right. And hopefully that odd even thing will be gone now. Now on the right side I have two times three or six oxygens. On the left side those oxygens are coming in pairs, but now I can put a three in here and get six oxygens without doing any fractions. You can do these with fractions, but it's going to get messy, and it's just not, not really a good idea. On an exam, I would give you the balanced equation. So how many grams of chromium-3 oxide? Well, even if you didn't do real well on the nomenclature part, hopefully you could um, identify from these three choices which one's chromium-3 oxide because the first one's chromium and the second one's oxygen, and so it must be the other one that has chromium and oxygen together, right? We're going to use that equation to help us organize the information in the question. So it says, how many grams of chromium-3 oxide? So under that formula, we're going to put a question mark, how many, and grams. We want how many grams of that. That's what we're trying to find out. Can be produced from 15.0 grams of solid chromium. So under chromium, we're going to write 15.0 grams. So we've got 15 grams of chromium. We want to know how many grams of the chromium oxide we can make. And it says there's excess oxygen. So don't get messed up by that. All that means is there's plenty of oxygen. You don't need to worry about it. There's plenty. So we don't, we'll just ignore the oxygen. So now we have to go from grams of chromium to grams of chromium oxide. And here's where the map comes in. Grams to moles to moles to grams. So our map starts out grams of chromium to moles of chromium to moles of the thing we're trying to find out, Cr2O3. CR2O3 to grams of CR2O3. Grams to moles to moles to grams. When we look at this, in this first conversion, we're changing from grams to moles, but the compound is the same, or the element. We're not changing what it is, we're just changing the unit. In the second step, which is what we learned how to do in the last section, we're going from moles of chromium to moles of chromium oxide. Here we're not changing the unit, but we are changing what substance we're talking about. In the last step, we're going from moles of chromium oxide to grams. So we're changing the unit, but not the substance. You can only change one thing at a time which is kind of good, good advice for lots of things. Only change one thing at a time. So there's our map, and now we're going to use dimensional analysis to write out our equation with all the units, and then we'll go looking for some numbers. So we start with what we're given, which is 15.0 grams of chromium. 15.0 grams. And here it is important to write down grams of what? We look at that equation, that map, and it's got three arrows. We're going to have three conversion factors. The units, the quantities in the map are the quantities that go in the numerator on the top of those fractions. So we already have grams of chromium. And the next one's going to be moles of chromium. And the next one's going to be moles of chromium oxide, Cr2O3. And the last one's going to be grams of Cr2O3. If we understand dimensional analysis, once we get that map, which is going to be the same for all these types of calculations, then we, we're just following these steps. We're just copying it down, and it, it, just, it all falls together. So the map units go on the top, and then the previous unit goes on the bottom. We put grams of chromium down here so that the units cancel out. Over here, we're going to put moles of chromium on the bottom so the units cancel out. 
and here moles of chromium oxide. So the units cancel out. In another class, I had a student ask, well, why can't we just go from grams to grams? Isn't there a conversion factor for that? Isn't there a shortcut? <coughs> well, sometimes shortcuts end up being more trouble than they're worth. Have you ever done that when you're driving? Oh, we'll take a shortcut. And you end up, it takes a lot longer, right? Yes, you could go from grams of chromium directly to grams of chromium oxide. But you would need a conversion factor that would only apply to this particular equation. And so if you were going to do that all the time, you'd need a huge table of conversion factors, or you'd have to create the conversion factors, which would be more trouble than doing this, because you would end up doing this to find the conversion factor. So there's really no short step. This really is the simplest, most straightforward way to do it. And I'm sorry if you don't like it, but that's life, isn't it? So we got our units in there. Any questions about the units? We got our units in, and then we need numbers. So we have three terms that we need to find numbers for. The one in the middle is the easy one. Those numbers come from the balanced chemical equation. So we look up here. Um, here we've got Cr2O3. And so we find that in the equation, and we see what number is in front of it. Two. That's two moles of Cr2O3. So we write a two in front of it. And then the other one, the one on the bottom, is chromium by itself. There's a four in front of it. There's a four in front of chromium, so down here in front of chromium, we write a four. That's easy enough, huh? Because for every four moles of chromium that you start with, you get two moles of Cr2O3. The first term and the last term are molar masses. The relationship between grams and moles is the molar mass of that element or compound. And that comes from the periodic table. Elements are easy. Chromium is an element, and so we just look at the periodic table and say 52.00. So one mole of chromium is 52.00 grams. It's always one mole is how many grams. Do not put those coefficients from the equation into your molar masses. A molar mass is the mass of one mole, not the mass of how many moles you have in the, in the equation. Those coefficients get used in the middle term and we're only going to use them once, so don't go sticking a 4 in here. I don't know why people want to do that, but they always want to do that. So don't do that. This is the mass of one mole. It just makes things harder, and then you end up getting the wrong answer, too. And then over here, this one's a little more complicated. We're going to have to actually calculate that. Um, that compound has 2 moles of chromium in every mole of the compound, so 2 times the mass of chromium and it's got three times the mass of oxygen. Two times 52 plus three times 16. So 152 is the mass of one mole of that. So over here, we're going to put 152.0 grams per one mole. Then we have to calculate. So we've got 15 divided by 52 times 2 divided by 4 times 152 equals that should have three sig figs, and I come up with 21.9 grams of Cr2O3. Did anyone else get that number? Yes, okay. Because everybody makes mistakes when they use their calculator. And if you do it twice, if it was a random mistake, you'll probably discover it. So, any questions?
I often get comments from students, but it looks so easy when you did it on the board. Well, yeah, I've been doing this for a long time. I didn't understand it the first time I had it in high school. But then in college, it started to make sense. I'm like, oh, this is nice. I like this. I can do this. So it is easy for me. You have to go home and practice it, though. You have to go home and practice it and figure it out. And so what do you do? You go home and you're, you're working on it and you're like, oh, I don't know. Go on YouTube and watch this lecture again. Okay? Watch me explain it again. That's what these, that's why I'm, I mean, it's work for me to put these things up here. But I'm doing it because I know at least some of you are, are watching them. And if it helps anybody, then it's worth doing. And, and asking questions is really important too. So I think we have another example. Here's another example. Tin fluoride is added to some dental products to help prevent cavities. That is background information. Kind of interesting. Did you know there was tin in your, in your toothpaste? Yeah, there's tin in your toothpaste. They call it stannous fluoride because most people don't recognize that stannous is tin ion. It, so that sounds better, but stannous fluoride is tin 2 fluoride. It's made according to this following equation. Um, so if you react tin and hydrofluoric acid, you get tin 2 fluoride and hydrogen gas. The question is, how many grams of tin 2 fluoride can be made from 55 grams of hydrogen fluoride if there's plenty of tin available? Now this time, the equation is balanced. Um, it's pretty safe to assume that if the equation has coefficients in it, this one does, it has a 2. If it has coefficients, you can pretty safely assume that it is balanced. If it has no coefficients, then you should probably check. But this one's balanced. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take the question and we're going to use the equation to help us organize that information. So when you do your work on a piece of paper, you should write down the balanced chemical equation and then write the information under it. So the question is, how many grams of tin fluoride? So that's SNF2. So question mark grams. That's what we're trying to find. And they're telling us that we have 55.0 grams of HF. So that's what we're starting with. So we identify what we're given, what we're starting with, and what we want to find out. And then we go to the map. Grams to moles to moles to grams. Grams of HF to moles of HF to moles of the thing we're looking for, moles of SNF2 to grams of SNF2. Grams to moles to moles to grams. We have a mass there of 55 grams. That's the beginning of our equation. Grams of HF. There are three arrows. There are three conversion factors, three fractions. The quantities, the units, and compounds in the map are what go in the top. So we've got grams of HF, so it goes to moles of HF, to moles of SNF2. And I don't know why. SNF2 just reminds me of Saturday Night Live. SNL. Grams of SNF2. Previous unit becomes the denominator, the bottom because we want those units to cancel out. We want grams of HF to go away and moles of SNF2. And those are going to cancel out. The middle one is the easy one to find numbers for. They come from the balanced chemical equation. So we look in the equation in front of SNF2. What number is there? SNF2 has no number in front of it. So you could leave no number in your equation, or you can remember that that's an implied one 
Multiplying by one doesn't change. So if you want to multiply by one because it makes you feel better, you go right ahead and do it. If you don't want to multiply by one because you realize that it doesn't make any difference, then you're fine too. Just skip it. In front of HF is the number two. So those numbers are coming from the equation. And the first, first um, conversion factor and the last one are molar masses. And I don't have room at the bottom, so I'll put them up at the top. So for HF, one mole of HF is going to be the mass of hydrogen plus the mass of fluorine, which would be 20.01 grams of HF. So 20.01 grams is one mole. SNF2, SN is 118.7. So one mole of SNF2 is one mole of SN, 100 and, what did I say? 118.7. <coughs> and two moles of fluorine. So two times 19. There it is. So 118.7 plus 2 times 19, 156.7 grams SNF2. And now we do the math. Go from left to right, multiply by the top, divide by the bottom. 55 times 1 divided by 20.01 times 1 divided by 2 times 156.7 divided by 1. And I come up with 215. Anybody else get that? Thank you. 215 grams of SNF2. Any questions? The, um, where it says mole uh, SNF2, is that supposed to be one? The In the denominator there? Yeah, the denominator. Yes, that would be one. Sometimes I leave the ones. I forget to write the ones yeah. in there, but if you forget to divide by one, it doesn't matter. So, but that's a good question. It's always one mole. Don't, don't try to put the coefficient in there or anything. It's one mole. The mass of one mole is the molar mass. Any questions? Let's do another one. Consider the following reaction. What mass of water is needed to completely react with 20 grams of PCL3? So we look at that equation and we see there's coefficients in there, so we can assume safely that it's balanced. But if you're a suspicious person, you, you can check it and make sure. In real life, you would check it because you never know. But I've used these before, and that one's balanced. So what mass of H2O? So under H2O, question mark, grams. Needed to completely react with 20 grams of PCL3. So under PCL3, 20.0 grams. <coughs> now this one is a little different, because the others, they gave us a, pro a reactant and asked for a product. And here they're giving us one product, one reactant, sorry, and asking for the other reactant. And that's okay. You can do this calculation with any two things in the balanced chemical equation. They could both be reactants. They could both be products. 
You could go from product to reactant or reactant to product, any combination, and it's all the same process. So what's our map? Grams to moles to moles to grams. Don't make me make you chant it with me. Grams to moles to moles to grams. So grams of PCl3 to moles of the same thing. Moles of PCl3 to moles of what we're looking for, which is H2O, to grams of H2O. You see there's a pattern of these calculations? You have two compounds, one that they give you a mass and one that they're asking you for a mass. Grams to moles to moles to grams, you're starting with the one that they give you the mass of, you're going to end up with the one that they're asking you about. And our, our equations are all going to have three terms. So we start with 20.0 grams of PCl3. I know it's, I'll, I'll take that not as a sign that I'm boring, but that uh, you're tired. I was yawning earlier. It's Monday. it's Monday. Everybody's tired on Monday, right? It could be worse. This could be a 7 a.m. class, right? Yeah, that's that, that would be worse. Yeah. But you guys are smart enough that you wouldn't take a 7 a.m. class, right? It's not good. My husband has one at, at City College right now, and... He, he's teaching the same class later in the day, and the students in the later class usually do better. So grams to moles to moles to grams. And then previous term becomes the denominator. This is dimensional analysis. The units are telling us what to do. So if you learn how to listen to the units, then there's just so much less stuff you have to remember. Make sure that all your units actually cancel out. Don't do wishful unit canceling. People do some crazy things sometimes. Then we need numbers. Middle term comes from the balanced chemical equation. In front of H2O in the equation is the number 3. And so in, in my math equation down here, in front of H2O, I put three, and that's not the right place. It's over here. I'm zoomed in, and so I can't see the whole thing. What's in front of PCL3? Well, there's not actually a number in front of PCL3. If there was a number, what would it be? It'd be one, because chemists don't like to write the number one. And that's probably why I forget to write the number one a lot of times. OK, so we got those guys. And then we need molar masses for the first one and the last one. So PCO3 phosphorus is 30.97 and there's three chlorines. And if you're still struggling with um, molar masses, you gotta, you gotta get that straightened out first before you um, do this other stuff. 30.97 plus 3 times 35.45. 137.3 grams. Yes? Why did we not use on the previous one when we did the um, hydrogen and fluoride? Mm -hmm. Why did we not use the two in front of it? In the molar mass? Yes. Where we're using the Three and the chlorine. This one. We're the, be, you're talking about a subscript on one and a coefficient on the other. Okay, so the coefficient is the big number in front, and this says that we have three water molecules or three moles of water. That three is specific to this particular equation, this particular chemical reaction. This three is the formula for phosphorus trichloride. There are three chlorine atoms for every one phosphorus atom, and that is true regardless of what reaction is participating in. 
okay? And that's a real, that's a great question. The coefficients, the big numbers, show up in the middle term. In this particular reaction, one mole of phosphorus trichloride will react with three moles of water. And so those show up in here. But in our first term and our last term, we're finding the mass of one mole of PCL3. And so we find the mass of a mole of phosphorus and three moles of chlorine because it's PCL3. So that's 137.3, and we'll put that in here for the grams. And it's always going to be one mole. Molar mass is the mass of a mole. A mole, one mole. And water. Do you have the molar mass of water memorized yet? 18.02. So 2 times 1.008 plus 16 equals 18.02 grams. That's the mass of one mole of, of water. 18.02 grams for one mole. So we've got 20 grams times one divided by 137 Point three times 3 divided by 1 times 18.02 divided by 1 equals, I'm going to round this to three significant figures, and we're going to end up with 7.87 grams of H2O. Units are important. Units are really important. Any questions? There are some topics in this class that I've said, you can, you can pass the class if you don't quite get that. This is not one of those. Okay. This is important. This is essential. And, I mean, it's big. This, this whole chapter, we're just going to get a little more complicated next. This whole chapter is on this. And then it's going to come back a couple of other times as well. So it's not going to go away. And this is really, really important.